The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Hello and welcome to About Town. I'm your host, Sarah Luxinger, and today my guest is Wayne Haney from Farm Bureau Insurance. How are you doing today? I am great, Sarah. Thank you. Great. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. A little hot. Blazer was a wrong choice today. <laughs> well, so first things first, where did you grow up? I grew up in a little town called Plainwell, Michigan. And where is that? That is on the what we lovingly call the other side of the state, here. Okay. And over there, we call this Detroit. So, <laughs> so the west side. So the west side, right. And uh, Plainwell is a small town, not that different than Lake Orion, mm-hmm. actually, um, just north of Kalamazoo. Okay. So you went from one small town to the next. I'm sure there's like some stuff in between there, and we'll there get to that. a couple things in between there. Right? All right. So how? give us uh, the um, Reader's Digest version of how you got from there to here. Wow. There, I'm not sure that there is a Reader's Digest version of that, but the short version is work. Mm-hmm. Um, is what is how I ended up over on this side of the state. So okay. um, I served in the army as a reservist, um, but that was really that was a way to fund college, and um, and so most of my time was high school, college, um, army reserves, and um, then I taught um, at college, and I did graduate school, um, worked on the East Coast for a while. Okay, we're gonna need to back up I for know, a second. Right? There, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's a reader, lot. That's a Reader's Digest version, right? Ended up ended up over on this side of the state, and I've been here now for decades. Gotcha. So. Well, first, thank you for your service. Sure. And what did you do in the army? So really, I was a reservist, and so at the time, um, they had a huge surplus of people, and so. I went in. I was going to be what they called a hard charging Charlie, a Mike Fifty One, and our job was to um, learn how to make telephone wires the old-fashioned way. So if somebody out in the field had to talk to somebody, well, we had to physically string wire, you know, in order to into like what you would think of like an old-school switchboard. What, what uh, decade was this? This was like what 1850 something okay. like that. Okay, right. yeah, okay, but I'm sure I would right have, after the telegram. Right after that, right? Yep, and but. Um, very, very early on, they had a huge surplus of us, and so they asked for volunteers who were willing to shift right from that immediately just to straight-up reserves. So I really never got to do my job. Gotcha. I just did my six years of had my hand up and said, yep, I'm here to serve if you need me, and they didn't. And it was not like being a reservist today where they are almost always called up. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were there ready to serve, but, um, you know, never had to. Gotcha. And uh, you went to college. Where did you go to college? Went to college at Olivet. Okay. Um, by East Lansing. Okay. And I went to college to be a teacher. And All right. So, and that's what I spent most of my, um, most of my career doing. So well, you said the, you taught college. I, so Olivet, I mean, this, this is a whole, a whole tangent we could go on to if you wanted to, but Olivet had a super interesting program. I frankly don't know if they still do, but every student was guaranteed a job on campus if they wanted to. That's amazing. It was really incredible. I don't think many colleges have that guarantee anymore yeah it, it was really and i'm not sure that olivet does anymore either to be honest but um but it was incredible and that's how most of us there funded school mm-hmm. so we uh so i got a campus position and um when i got ready to graduate they said wait a minute if wayne leaves tomorrow we don't really know what we're how we're going to replace this thing that we had built and so they offered me a position to stay on and and then I was I had started grad school at um, at uh, MSU and that was just enough schooling. They made they they went back into the bowels of college history and discovered this position called a lecturer, which is like the rudimentary bare bones level faculty position uh-huh. in college. And so um, they named they they blew the dust off that, made me a lecturer in English to justify my position, but then really what I mostly did there um, was I, I did, and I did teach English, but then I also t- um, ran their new student orientation program. Gotcha. And their academic advising gotcha. center. Well, I mean, you're a very personable guy, especially for an insurance agent, so <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Uh, so you taught, and then and then what? Um, and then I went to graduate school, um, and um, which 
average people would call seminary. Um, and so I, and I served as a priest for um, a few years. Okay, I'm learning a lot that I did so, not know right, about. No, well, so my, I mean, I think that my whole life I've been looking for a place to serve. Mm-hmm. And I've been, you know, and I think I tried this and tried that and tried a bunch of other things. And maybe now that I'm almost of retirement age, I almost feel like I maybe have put something together that feels like it's exactly the right fit. But, do, uh, do you still know what you want to do when you grow up? Kind of. I think right now what I want to do is uh, own Haney Farm Bureau in downtown Oregon. And I mean, I'm, we're having a ball with yeah. a ball with that. Yes. So, um, but yeah, so I served the church um, for a few years. Um, and then I really never got the passion to teach out of my system. And so then I um, left full-time ordained ministry, um, went into um, education, and mm-hmm. or I guess back into education, and, um, and I really never stopped. And so then I took, I took early, um, what's called early deferred retirement from the state, um, but I was way too young to retire. And there's no way I was going to just retire and be at home. So mm-hmm. I'd always been looking for, well, what am I going to do after... Um, I take retirement from the state and then the insurance thing just kind of emerged as what felt right. But if you, you know, if you asked me several years ago, Oh, you know, or said to me, Hey, you're going to be, um, you're going to own an insurance agency or even like know anything about insurance. <laughs> I would right. just laughed at you and said, mm, no, not me. Way too boring. And well, not yeah. only that, it's a family business. Your wife works with you. My wife works with me and your, our one, your daughter and our one daughter yeah. works there too. Yes. So it is very much a family, a family business. I, I'm sorry, my mind is blown. I, I did not know I did not know a couple of those things about you. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I am glad that you went into the insurance business because you cut my insurance rate by <laughs> half. Uh, not to make this like an hour long advertisement for um, Haney Farm Bureau, but but they my business insurance was cut in half and it's better coverage. Anywho, nice. Um, Love it when it works out that way. Yeah, and actually, you were referred to me by Tina. So, uh, anywho, what made you pick downtown Lake Orion to do, to open up? So, uh, I mean, so much of this is truly grace, um, grace, I mean, just pure grace. So my, when I went to work for Farm Bureau, they asked me if I would hang my shingle in downtown Romeo. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, sure, I'm a team player, happy to help. And our lives were already in a, in a bit of a transition anyway. So downtown Romeo, super cute, nice downtown, not unlike um, downtown Orion, although I was not there terribly long. And, um, I think I made it about a year in downtown, um, Romeo and Farm Bureau approached me and asked that, you know, and they're, it's a wonderful company, wonderful group of people. I don't, they didn't intend to be deceptive. I don't mean to imply that they mm-hmm. were being deceptive, but they approached me and said, Hey, um, we have a group of clients that we need somebody to take care of. Would you be willing to help? And, you know, I'm, and they know me, I'm mm-hmm. like, of course, you know, you need some help, I'd be happy to step up. And most of those clients were in Clarkston. So that was the initial conversation. They said, would you take on this group of clients and care and feed them? I'm like, yes, I will. And then almost as a secondary, it was, oh, and by the way, since you're going to do that, we would like you to move your office to Lake Orion <laughs> because that way you'll be about halfway between Clarkston and Romeo. You can still help your Romeo folks and help your Clarkston folks and you'll be right in the middle. Mm-hmm. So to be perfectly honest, I did not, Take it. initially say, oh, I must be in downtown Lake Orion, but I am, I, I'm beyond grateful that I'm in, I love. Well, you have just Orion. become part of the community. I mean, most people know who you are. It's, it, people you walk downtown, welcome. you'd walk down the street. I'm sure you get like at least five highs, even on like a Sunday afternoon. People have been very sweet. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have been very good to the community. Uh, I remember having seen the big pink uh, chair for the real men of Orion out in front of your shop. Right. And, uh, yeah, wonderful. So you were, you were saying that you were surprised that you got into insurance. And if you had asked yourself, you know, many years ago, you wouldn't have thought, what made you think maybe this is something I should look into? Yeah, so that's a really, a really good question. At least it's, it's integral to my story because, um, as I said, I was getting to that point. Um, there are three different retirement programs in the state of Michigan for teachers. Mm -hmm. And so depending on when you came in, you have, that's the one that you're kind of connected to. And the one that I'm in is a fairly short window of time, but you hit a kind of ceiling where once you've worked X number of years, you're really, your pension isn't going to change. And, um, and not that I was in that just for the pension at all, but it just, there wasn't a, 
huge, it did make a lot of financial sense to just continue to stay there unless you positively love doing that, which I did. So mm-hmm. I still thought, well, heck, I'll teach till I'm 75 um, because I loved, loved what I was doing and um, still miss it, you know, still miss my school, still miss the kids. Um, but um, Ellen and I were empty nesters for a minute and I was kind of thinking, oh, well, if I did go and do something else after I retired, what might that be? So I, I did kind of have my net cast of just, oh, well, maybe I could do this and maybe I could do that. And the kids were out of the house and I'm always looking for, you know, just some, something else to do, you know, just to keep, you know, to serve and to, and to keep occupied. And so I was doing, I was experimenting with a couple things at once. I was a reserve officer with the Pierre County Sheriff's Department. It's super fun. And so I thought, well, I might, uh, and we, and you have to go through it in Lapeer anyway, you have to go through Academy, Mm -hmm. um, to be a reserve officer. And then I was on the Marine patrol. And so the Marine patrol was kind of my summer gig. Um, that was super fun. And, um, and so I was seriously contemplating, um, taking early, early deferred retirement from the state and then becoming an officer. Um, and then simultaneously, um, this insurance idea came up only because one of my former students kept posting on Facebook. Now, this was when Facebook was fairly new. If you can believe there was a time. Oh, I, that was my <laughs> that was my high school year. I still right. remember when Facebook was a rite of passage yes. in the college. Yes. yes, right. Right, because it wasn't for... You had to have like a college um, uh, email address, yes. I believe. It. In the yeah. beginning, you had yep. to have it, that. That was definitely, yeah. So so he he was posting on, his name's Chris Berrios. And um, he worked for a different insurance company. And he kept posting on Facebook, gosh, we're really busy. I really need some help. And so for a solid six months, he and I joked back and forth where I said, well, Chris, I should come work for you. And he's like, oh, Mr. Haney, if you ever wanted to come work for me, um, there'd always be a place for you. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and so yeah. we just kind of played around with that. Well, then um, it got kind of serious. And I and, it, and the um, we got into the fall, the leading end of the leading um, edge of uh, winter, the Marine Patrol was done for the year. And I said, well, Chris, why don't we sit down and actually talk about this? And, um, and so we met and talked about that. And, and the first thing I said to him is I said, Chris, I got to tell you right out of the gate, insurance sucks. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's boring. You know, it's, I used to be an insurance <laughs> defense attorney. <laughs> so you know it sucks. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, yes, yes, actually, I do know it sucks. Right. right. And, and uh, I was the easiest sell. I remember you coming in like, ah, this is the lowest I can uh, – I will take whatever insurance I can possibly have to cover myself. Anyway, continue. Right. <laughs> so, so that was it. So I started um, working strictly part-time for Chris and really as a way to help him out um, and just kind of test the waters and see what that was, what that might be like. So mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was working, um, you know, my regular job and then I was working with the sheriff's department and then I was um, doing this insurance thing. And I just, I quickly discovered it was super fun at least, I approach it the same way I, ta- I taught. And so I, I joke, but it really isn't a joke. I say I've never sold anybody anything because I just don't. I'm like, mm-hmm. here's how this works. I love explaining the intricacies of insurance, and it's very confusing. I still learn something every week that I didn't know, and I've been doing this for eight years. Between I'm sure the, uh, the new auto um, insurance policies uh, threw you through a loop because that, that I had to write those out for my uh, the law firm I was working at, right? you know, this is what we have to do now. And it was a catastrophe, trucking catastrophe accident, um, law firm. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, and this has to be right. like absolutely <laughs> correct. Cause <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. Anywho. So what's one of the most, the first one that comes to ha- your, your, your mind, um, one of the most like odd insurance rules. Cause there's a lot. There are a lot. So like, I'm trying to think for me. Um, well, I always thought it was very odd that if you are, um, if you hit like an underinsured or a non-insured person, you kind of bear the brunt of that. You, it, that's why I always like, I, even after the reform, I'm like, you buy the top tier, the unlimited stuff. I always thought that was kind of an odd thing to to have, and I'm sure there's a lot of policy behind it because. You know, you have out-of-state drivers and whatnot, but is there anything like that with the housing or, like, just interesting or weird things that probably have a lot of policy behind them but wouldn't make sense when you're just 
trying to explain it to somebody. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, it, and I mean, we could spend hours on that. Then nobody. Would That's why listening. I just said the most interesting right. one that came right. to your yeah, the top of so, your head. But I would. I think the one that I find myself explaining the most is that what you and I call car insurance really isn't. Mm-hmm. And so everyone I speak with, I usually start with that when we're talking about specifically auto insurance. But I think auto insurance is the single most complicated um, insurance. And it, it starts right with the fact that we call it auto insurance, and mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. Because you can leave the state of Michigan and go to a lot of other states and buy car insurance that works just like you and I think of as home insurance. Something happens to the house, we pay our deductible, house gets fixed. Something happens to the car, we pay our deductible, car gets fixed. I think we all kind of get yeah. that. But car insurance in Michigan has health insurance buried in it. And most people in Michigan, despite our long history with that, just really, I think they do now more than mm-hmm. ever. But two years ago, it, whenever I said that to people, their eyes would kind of get wide and go, what? You know, and then I would explain it. It's our car insurance is not expensive. Our health care is what's expensive. Right, right. And I, re- um, I remember having to uh, look through all of those um, payouts when there was a lawsuit going on for a car accident. I'm like, wow, they pay a lot. They cover a lot. They can cover um, like home care or if you, you have a spouse or a child or another person in the family who's taking care of you, they'll, they'll pay that, right. that person so much depending on level of training. Now I'm trying to go back and think. And I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to look intelligent right now, and it's not working. Not working. No, you're, but you're exactly correct. My parents were in a terrible auto accident. Um, gosh, has it been seven years now? But any anyway, um, a guy hooked, hooked on his boat trailer, except he didn't, right? So my parents are driving down the road, minding their own business. All of a sudden, next thing they know it, there's a boat in their lap, you know, or a boat trailer in their lap and um, my mom lost her right leg in that collision and um the things the again this just always blows my mind the things the car insurance did was just out of this world like um they went my parents had a very old home nice small modest you know 50s house Mm -hmm. nobody had ever dreamed of somebody in a wheelchair being in a house like that when it was built Mm -hmm. the car insurance company went in and basically gutted most of that house the kitchen was gutted and redesigned. Their master bedroom bath was gutted and redesigned. I mean, the inside of that house basically rebuilt to make it possible for a ha- for a wheelchair bound person to function there. Now, that, what kind of insurance did they have? It's car insurance. That's just, just, just that's just, just straight up straight car up car insurance. insurance. Yeah. Jeez. And you know, and it's and I mean, our family probably would have gotten by. You know, my one brother in law is a builder. Mm-hmm. Um, my other brothers are very handy. You know, we have some resources. We I think we would have been okay. But people who aren't or don't have you know don't have those kind of family members that can mm-hmm. do that kind of stuff it's you know it's an amazing benefit that the other 49 states just don't have access to right um, yeah we're the only one well we also are such like a car centric state i mean right we have highway one right that's fair <laughs> all right so uh another um uh the lake shore or the lake house or lake estate there we go. The Lake Estate. We got that from you. So you know a couple people who have that. Yes, yes. Right? We, we got that from you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that, that blew my mind when you were, well, Brad went and talked to you, and then he, my husband, uh, came back and told me about it. I was like, what? <laughs> and it, it saved us quite a bit of money. But it's also really good coverage for, you know, houses on the lake. Right, yeah. If, especially with people who are in your situation. Because, um, in fact, we have... Uh, a bit of lore about that here in Lake Orion because what was it five, six years ago, there was a huge storm that oh, yeah. a lot of people will still talk about. We, we were gone that weekend when we came back and it was like after the disaster movie. Right. Yeah. Like after the disaster, like there was a bush that was just drifting across the, the road. <laughs> we're like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> right. Trees were down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was nuts. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that's no, that's exactly right. And, um, and so uh, not that long ago, a couple told who are now with us on our lake policy, and one of the reasons they are was because they had a boat hoist, and um, it's the kind that you can put in and take mm-hmm. out, right? And well, during that storm, one of their boat hoists ended up a few neighbors over. The other one is still like divers could go see it in the bottom of Lake Orion. I mean, it's down there somewhere. Oh my God. We presume, and they eventually their insurance company did cover it. 
but it was a six month war. Because those aren't cheap and they're not easy to get in and out. I mean, you right. got to like have the right boat to, you know, trek it out. But oh my god! Right, right. So that so that's the kind of thing. And so s- several years ago, Farm Bureau invented this product that basically works like a homeowner's policy, except it can specifically cover things like seawalls and docks and mobile boat hoists and permanent boat hoists. And um, almost any insurance company can cover boats, but those other kind of lakeshore-related things, Mm -hmm. those fall into that awful gray zone. And as you know, as an attorney, we don't like gray. Oh, I love gray. What are you talking about? (laughs) I love that gray zone. You love to argue gray, right? That's my that's my jam. <laughs> Come on. No, but insurance, I don't like the gray zone. Yeah. So, um, so really, that's that's what that does. Now, if somebody lives on a lake, um, they still qualify for that. If they don't really need those extra coverages, then it just comes down to price. And um, you know, in farm farm bureau land, uh, our lake estate product just rates really really well because people who live on a lake, as folks around here will tell you, they tend to take good care of their stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. All right, so we got the insurance stuff. All right. uh, we, we can come back if we have any callers. Um, this is not live, <laughs> so we won't have any callers. But all right, so I want to get to um, you work with your family. Right. So I'm a third-generation attorney. I worked for my father when I was, like, younger. Not not as an attorney um, in law school, yes, but anywho, not as an attorney, attorney. But um, as a kid, I worked for him. I was the receptionist. Okay. Um, I, my mom would call, and I'd answer, and she's like, oh, I need to talk to Sarah. Like, mom, it's me, jeez. <laughs> but um, th- there's a reason why I don't work, or I never worked with my father as an attorney, as an adult. Um, how do you, and there's a reason why Brad and I don't work together. Well, we're separate, we're different types of attorneys, but yeah, I don't think one of us would be alive right now if we did work <laughs> together. How do you make it work? And not only that, your wife and your daughter. Right. And so, and now Ellen. Well, first, your wife is amazing. She is amazing. I've talked yeah. to her several times. Oh my God, I I really like your wife. Yeah, me too. Okay, me well, I'm, that, I'm that's, a, good. that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, but she uh, and and initially, I mean, I will tell you that initially, Ellen was very clear. She said, "This is your business. This is not my business. I'm having nothing to do with it." And I said, "I I said you're correct. I totally respect that." And you know, she and I both, I think, um, just have servant hearts and. You know, my first three to four months, she just kind of watched me, and she's like, "Oh, that poor boy." He did. <laughs> because people have no idea. At least I had no idea. Like you think, "Oh, well, how hard can insurance be?" I've never worked harder in my entire life. Like it's, you well, know, well, you're I, opening your own business. This is your. This is yours. Right, right, and it, but also just the the intricacies that go into. Oh yeah, and it's just weird and, too. <laughs> and it's just weird, yeah. But um, you know, and so and there's just so many moving parts, and so. You know, I think it was about month four, somewhere in the four to six month mark when when I first started and it was literally just me. And she was like, well, what can I do to help? And I said, well, you know, bless your heart. I'm not trying to suck you into this, but if you really want to help, I could very much use help with this part and this part. Mm -hmm. And that's really and we've stayed fairly true to that. And so Ellen um, and so part of the answer to that, I think you might be fishing for is Ellen. I don't actually work together. Okay. on the like we're not often in a room doing our contributions to Haney mm-hmm. Farm Bureau at the same time. Sometimes we are, but um, she handles all of the bookkeeping, which is a, just an amazing gift. I mean, she's very, very good at it. She's super exacting. She's very detail-oriented, and um, and she, and I just don't even have to really think about that anymore. I mean, she handles, she pays all of our bills. and That would and, be nice. And that's awesome, right. Um, and uh, so she deals with that. She also helps with claims, which is amazing. So um, if somebody, heaven forbid, well, like this, we had a pretty rough weekend, right, with all the water. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a lot of claims come in. So initially Ellen's voice is what people will hear on the other end of the phone. And so she will reach out to them, make sure that they're okay, see if they need anything immediately, just make sure that the whole claims process is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many agencies do that, but I know ours does. I've and never had that before. Yeah, we we take that extremely seriously. And because from my point of view, that's our time to shine. And that's really, I mean, people give us their money year after year after year, hoping they don't need to use it. But if they do, they want to know it's going to work. And Ellen is right on the front lines making sure that that happens. So gotcha. those are really her two major areas. But 
Now, if she were sitting right here, she would have smacked me right about now because what she re- the part that she loves the most that we've all told her, you know, when you ever decide to retire again, yes, this one thing that you do, we are never going to be able to replicate it. And you may or may not remember this, or but everybody who gets a quote from us um, gets a little gift card. Yeah. And we're a huge fan of you doing downtown. You guys have bought gift cards from me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We're very much believers in sending people to shop local. But those gift cards, and so anybody who gets a quote from us or anyone who refers somebody to us, they all get it. Everybody gets a gift card. Well, the gift card comes in this card that Ellen made by hand. And each one of those probably takes 10 to 15 minutes to crank out. I mean, they are a piece of art. Mm -hmm. And... She makes all those. So that's, I mean, that's, it's just huge. Um, it's super pretty. We get comments on it all the time. And again, if, if something ever, if she were to say, screw it, you guys, I'm done. <laughs> and people are going to now get Hallmark store-bought bulk <laughs> cards from Amazon. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because right. none of us can do what Ellen does with, with that part of it. Well, it's the personal touch. That's, that's huge. That yeah. is very big. And it's heartfelt. I mean, mm-hmm. she, you know, and she, she's genuinely grateful for the clients that we have and um, for people who send us folks and, yeah. and she, uh, she likes us to put our best foot forward. We all do. And your daughter works there. Now, Mary, um, our daughter and I, she like, she's as close physically to me as you and I are mm-hmm. right now. When we're like, we work in the same like area four yes. walls. Right. And yeah. uh, fortunately we, we get along. I mean, Ellen and I would get along, too, yes, yes. but, um, but Mary and I, um, it's it's a little freaky. Like people will, we don't exactly finish each other's sentences. Sandwiches, but, mm-hmm, <laughs> but sometimes we could. <laughs> and uh, so she is our office manager and our marketing manager, and she also started very organically because mm-hmm. um, she was teacher. Surprise, surprise, and um, and so she worked part time for several years in our agency, and at, two solid at least. And she and I would work together on Saturday mornings. And because we're open, our office is open Saturday, nine to one. Most people don't come in a lot. You know, sometimes they do. But and so Saturday has turned into this really nice time to kind of look back over the week, make sure people are all set. Um, Not more and more. We're just amazingly blessed. And so more and more, I have appointments kind of solid from nine to nine to noon or nine to one. But um, but for a lot of time, Mary and I use that time to kind of sort of do dreaming and visioning and planning and a lot of sort of the behind the scenes um, organizational things Mm -hmm. and and whatnot. And then when the pandemic hit, her particular school um, kind of put them in a bit of an awkward situation where they were not going to do really any protocols. And so it was just her, their school decided it was going to be full steam ahead, business as usual. They weren't, I mean, there was literally nothing, no, nothing. They implemented nothing in terms of, uh, safety protocols and um she and her husband were trying to start a family and she's now due in a couple months yeah (laughs) so that's that's super exciting and she just said she came to me and she just said well dad i can't i can't go back into the classroom under these and i said no you really can't so we were able to you know create this opportunity for her but which sounds like we did her a favor but she has just transformed our agency she it is a well-oiled machine because of mary and you guys have always been game on whenever I come around with the my iPhone camera, <laughs> right. ready to do like a downtown party uh, or whatnot, um, commercial or, or video. But yeah, I've always appreciated how gung-ho you guys have been and how much you want to be involved. You're one of the only, if not the only, I have, I, before I say that for sure, I'd have to check, professional um, business downtown that does that. Mm. That, that's involved like that so thank you sure thank you and i and i know that's part mary it is right. so but yeah that's amazing well i guess it's a little different dynamic than a bunch of attorneys in one family like arguing all the time right. and working together <laughs> right. i'll give i'll give you that i guess right. i'm not so surprised no. anymore we save our arguments for saturday mornings gotcha gotcha out of view no and it's great that you guys are open on saturdays because i remember when i was commuting you know three hours a day and brad was commuting and we never had time to. I think we we either met you or he met you on a Saturday or I something. Believe that's yeah, right. Yeah, because there's just there was no way that we were going to make it before five o'clock on a on a weekday. Right. 
So, and this was pre-pandemic, so he wasn't working from home. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, now I get to ask you. All right. I can't. Now, three, this is the part I'm nervous about, right? Three ran- yes, okay. three random questions. <laughs> and since you asked before, you can pick, you can make up or think up of a question to ask me. Okay. So I'll ask you two. You can ask me one, and then I'll ask you the last one. All right, that's fair. What is your favorite food? That's an easy one. Oh, it is. I love I love food. So which one's the favorite? It would almost certainly be something right now from Oat Soda. Oat Soda has a pizza. I know. Their pizza crust is incredible. They we've already talked about this on the show. Really? Hands down. Oh my god. Their pizza is amazing. It, I mean, there's a lot of good pizza places downtown, but the way the pepperoni, I just... I don't know what he does, but I, I but well, I, I do know that he makes it every day fresh from scratch. Yes, yes. So so they've gotten a lot of props on this podcast. Okay, all right. Well, pizza. I did not realize that. And yeah, so well, no, no. Hey, this. hey, there we go. You're going to get tagged again at Soda. <laughs> Good. All right. What superpower do you wish you had? Mm. Let's see. What would be an amazing superpower for an insurance advisor, right? The ability to uh, persuade, persuade people. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, yeah, no, right. that's, that's, uh, but you said you, you don't sell anybody I'm not a, anything. I'm not, a, I'm not a salesy kind of guy. But, yeah. But, but uh, you know, superpowers are kind of intriguing and creepy all the time, right? Well, the and, time. and this is something that you're going to have forever, so it doesn't necessarily have to be for insurance purposes. Right. No, I, I, totally, I totally get that. So, um, but I think, you know, I think a super fun superpower would be the ability to eat all of the oat soda pizza and gain zero of the oat soda pizza calories and pounds. If you could like, find a way to do that. <laughs> that would be a, that superpower I would take. Yes, because <laughs> you too. can't tell from seeing. In fact, I think I heard you talk about this on, um, on a um, on a show that you did here. But you used to be quite a runner. I, I did, and you can't tell, but I used to be quite a runner. Really? Yes, fam. And so I'm slowly trying to gimp my way back, much as I think I heard you talk recently that you're trying to. But to your point, it is super hard, is it not? To once you're once you're out of that, I did spot, an- I did an ultra marathon about uh, five years ago now, five, six. God, that means I'm getting older when I can remember five, six years ago like it was yesterday. Right. Um, so Yeah, I, it was like 28. Anyway, I did not stop eating like I was training and gaining some weight. And now it's like, ugh, everything <laughs> hurts. <laughs> right. When I go out for a run, I get really tired. So I started walking. I, d- I did start walking because at least you're doing something. Right. So, well... Congratulations on getting back at it. Well, I'll try, yeah, try to. But. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep the positivity going. Right, right, right. Um, okay, so what's your question for me? So, are, yeah, so my question for you was about your running. Like, how, how are you? Where are you in that? Are you still, are you still at it? No, okay. no, I am not still at running. Nope. Um, I so one thing that I missed with um, training when I was running uh, was weights. I never did weights, and so I think that's why I crashed so hard um, during the ultra marathon. Ultra marathon is anything over a marathon, and it's usually in like the woods. So and lasts a day, right? Yeah, it was eight hours and forty-seven minutes. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, Um, it it was intense, and I mean, you do have to walk some of it, Um, and then you're wading up water a couple of you know tenths of a mile, but that actually. Slows you down a lot, especially when you have to change your clothes afterwards. Um, I, I but I never did weight, so I think I didn't have like the the powerhouse behind the endurance, so it quickly declined. So I'm getting into weights now, mm. um, but nice. I, I have to have a trainer like yelling at me because I won't do it myself. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I'm at. Thanks, Wayne, for right, asking. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, which one is the? No. All right. Ooh. What fictional character would you like to meet? A fictional character. Yes. So any of the Star Trek characters, I'd be super happy. Super, super happy. To, and you could pick any of them from the originals right up to, I don't care. All right. I think, like, I'm that, I'm that geeky. Like, I don't really know. Like, there are some people who, they, they can tell you episodes and actors' names and, uh-huh. you know, what ex, you know who was wearing the blue shirt and whatever. I can, I'm not that guy, but I just, but any of it, I like, 
all of it. Like even the stuff when the critics say, oh, well, this was the worst ever. No, no, I loved it. So you could drop me into any of those spots and I would be like, this is awesome. Let's just go over here and have a coffee. What do you like? Do you like the the two new Star Treks with um, Chris Pine? I thought those were great. Yeah. I thought I thought those were, you know, I thought those were great and too. fine. And I, yes. I love how on the Big Bang Theory, I don't know if you watched that, but um, they, they bring that up because it's about, you know, nerds. Right, right. And uh, <laughs> they bring that up and... You know, the one of the main characters, Sheldon, was like all conflicted because he likes the new one and the old one. And it was good. It was a good way to bring it all together. Nice. Hollywood, you know, supporting itself in an odd moment there. Yeah. yeah. But yes. OK. But I like I like those characters because they think they've done a superb job of dealing with human dynamics, human mm-hmm. emotions, human interactions. Um, you know, you, yeah, it's set in uh, sci fi land. But really, I think they do a very, very wonderful job of bringing in. Well, I mean, how else are you going to talk about race and gender issues without using race and gender, gender issues? Right. You know, you, you, you bring extraterrestrials in. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, ironically enough, you're not <laughs> the first Trekkie I talked to this week. <laughs> this week? What is it, Monday? <laughs> uh, okay, so th- this weekend, th- right, the okay. past three days. There we go, past three days. Um, uh, we, I was watching the fireworks with some friends, and I mm. found out that one of them was a Trekkie. And he's like, well, we were talking about TV shows that did not age well. Okay. Um, but Star Trek, while it hasn't aged great, it's not as bad as a lot of TV shows from that era. From the 60s? And- because right. they, were, they were pretty progressive for the time. I mean, they had interracial relationships. They had you know, women in positions of power, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, it was a very groundbreaking show that I don't think people, you know, from my generation given enough credit for because mm-hmm. it was just Shatner doing terrible acting. Right, moves, right. You know, <laughs> terrible fighting. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I can uh, see how it was very good um, for the time and just, you know, progressive. It's nice to see things moving forward. Mm-hmm. All right. So I mentioned that you do a lot for the community and you're involved in a lot of charity, charity work. What is one that's very near and dear to your heart? So um, anything that's cancer related, um, we've gotten involved in heavily. Mm-hmm. And so we just came off of a uh, man, woman of the year um, contest. I don't know if you. I, yeah, I came over I thought, for your yeah, ribbon cutting. That's yeah, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> that's what you did. Yes. And, uh, and so that was um, for um, the Lymphoma Leukemia Society and, um, you know, all that money going directly to cancer research. And then, as you mentioned, I'm trying to throw my support to the um, – Real men of Lake Orion and their their pink out events. Yeah, in, in the fall. So yeah. there were some great photos um, taken of Matt Pfeiffer and I just cracking up on that couch. I don't remember what we were talking about, but it was a good photo op. Um, but yeah, yeah. So why are you so involved in in cancer? So Ellen and I lost our one daughter Amy to cancer, and um, and it was that was just a just a unthinkable experience and. Um, you know, parents should not have to bury their children, and um, but sometimes they do. Mm-hmm. And so um, really that, you know, any opportunity to try to do something so that other people can be, you know, somehow helped um, during that is, it, you know, we're eager to, eager to do. Mm-hmm. So. That's amazing. That, that um, you know, taking an experience and making it something that you can, not a lot of people can do that, Wayne. I, I think I, I hold you and Ellen very high in high uh-huh. regards. And, and, and Mary. Um, but so thank you for all of that and for helping the community like you do. So we have a couple more minutes. Okay. I'll open it up to you if you want to bring anything up, talk about anything. If not, I can ask a more random question. Uh, you can ask random questions. I'll tell you one thing that I am um, super eager to work on is, um, and there have been conversations with the schools, uh, which is another you know, obvious key area of interest of mine. So we support um, the Teacher of the Year Award for Oxford Schools and for Lake Orion. Both those wonderful um, school districts, uh, they've they've awarded uh, Teacher of the Year and Support Person of the Year f- forever, you know, long before Wayne or Haney Farm Bureau came around. But one of the things that I always wished we could do is give a little bit of financial teeth to those awards. And so um, it started with Oxford and then migrated to Orion where we fund a $500 gift to each of the recipients. 
which I just think it's nice. And yeah. and what most of those people do being who they are is they're tempted to spend it on their classrooms and we always beg them, please don't do that. This is meant to be something you do that's nice for you. Right. You're always doing something just way above and beyond for everybody else. But and I like that. And that's been an integral part of our community outreach. I think we'll probably do that forever. Um but what I would like to do is expand um, our relationship with the schools a bit and see if there is not, because I know, I believe in my heart there is a way for all of the resources and the talent that we have among um, especially our junior, senior class and uh, classes. And we have a community that is desperately in need of employees. Yes. And not, and this is odd for someone given, I mean, I have what, one, two, three, four degrees or something like that. But college is not for everybody. There are so many things that people can do and wonderful lives people can make that right out of high school. And I know that there are people in this community that if we could identify them, mentor them, and then somehow connect them with business owners who need em- employees, mm-hmm. that I think we could create some wonderful lives out of all that. And, and you know, the young people would win and the area businesses would win. And so there have been, um, particularly with Orion schools, um, there's been some very intentional conversations about well, what might that look like and c- could we start to create kind of a local employee base incubator mm-hmm. um, where we identify and, and provide some, some somewhat generic training for um, high school juniors and seniors that would then pave the way for them to come right in to the world of work and have it be right in our community. That, that so. sounds amazing. Um, and when it's up and running, let us know. I would love to come back and talk about just, yeah. just that. Because so. um, I'll make a note of that because I would love to hear more about what's what's in that incubator right now because yeah. uh, I agree with you too. I have a lot of friends who went to college, have a lot of debt, and are not pursuing careers in what they are educated in. And I, I mean, I understand that. Would they have made a different decision? I don't think so. But mm-hmm. it's not for everyone. And the, the trades are, are lacking... We, we need more trades people. We need, we need more people employed every, uh, everywhere. everywhere. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, it is about that time. Thank you again so much for taking time out of your afternoon today and coming and talking to us. And we will be seeing you guys about town. Thank you.